Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Lord of the Rings original trilogy. It begins with the Fellowship of the Ring at the Shire, a beautiful place and home of the Hobbits. There are peaceful folk who love food and not going on adventures, except Bilbo Baggins, who went on a grand adventure in The Hobbit with his wizard friend Gandalf the Grey. It's Bilbo's birthday, and during his speech he pulls a prank and disappears! Yes, during his adventure he found a magic ring that turns him invisible. But there's something weird with the ring, it's very hard to give up, but he manages to do it and goes off to retire, and so the ring passes to his nephew Frodo. But now Gandalf's suspicious, so he throws the ring in the fire, which reveals the secret engraving, and it's very bad news. One ring to rule them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Yeah, way back in the day, they made a bunch of rings of power. We'll learn more about those theoretically in the upcoming Amazon series. But the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to rule them all and like almost conquered the world with it. But the human king got a lucky shot and cut the ring off his finger and because he poured his life force into it, that killed him. But Sauron can't truly die until the ring is destroyed and he had this chance to do it, but the ring corrupts anyone who has it, so he decided to keep it for himself. But after that, the ring was lost for a thousand years until by chance the creature Gollum picked it up, more on him later. And there in Gollum's cave is where during The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins picked it up, not knowing how important it was. So now Sauron's woken up and is hunting for the ring. They gotta get it out of here, but Gandalf can't take it. He's too strong. It would corrupt him immediately. It has to be Frodo Baggins, a nice incorruptible hobbit, to carry it. And he gets a partner because his best friend slash gardener, Samwise Gamgee, was eavesdropping and heard the whole thing. So as Gandalf rides off to do important wizard business, Frodo and Sam set off on an adventure. Turns out adventures are mostly just walking, like a comically large amount of walking. Pretty soon they're joined by two more hobbits, the Goofsters, Merry and Pippin. But this adventure is not all fun in games. They're being hunted by the mysterious Black Riders. They get to the Prancing Pony where they're supposed to meet Gandalf, but Gandalf isn't here. But there is someone here watching them, looking super cool sitting in the corner, the mysterious ranger Strider. That night Frodo accidentally puts the ring on, which makes him invisible, except to Sauron, and now the Black Riders know where he is. Strider grabs him, but turns out he's a good guy, and he explains the Black Riders are the Nazgul, the nine men who had their own rings of power, but are now bound to Sauron's will as ring rates. That night when they come to kill the hobbits, Strider fools him with the old pillow trick, and now he's gonna lead our group on the next phase of walking. But hobbits aren't used to this much walking. Walking. They already stopped for one breakfast, yes, but what about second breakfast? Soon the Nazgul find him and give Frodo a nasty stab, but Strider busts in there, goes into beast mode, and scares him off. Frodo's in bad shape now, but someone comes to rescue him. It's the elf, Arwen, who is incidentally Strider's girlfriend. She rides Frodo out of there and crosses the river just ahead of the Nazgul. If you want him, come and claim him. But boom, she unleashes the river power and washes the Nazgul away. They're out of commission for a bit. So Frodo's healed. He wakes up in a nice comfy bed where Gandalf's here. Nice of you to join us. He went to see his wizard boss, Saruman the White, but turns out Saruman's turned evil, we must join with Sauron. They have a wizard's battle, but Saruman wins and traps Gandalf on the top of his tower. But eventually Gandalf found a moth cell phone and called an Uber from the Eagles and flew on out of there. So they made it to Rivendell, home of the elves. But Lord Elrond has bad news. Sauron's too strong, the ring cannot stay here. So they hold a big council to decide what to do with it. The human Boromir of Gondor is like, yo, this is awesome, let's use it against Sauron. But you can't do that, the ring's super evil. The ring answers to Sauron alone. It's like, wait bro, who even are you? And Strider's elf friend Legolas drops the truth bomb. His real name is Aragorn, and he's the long lost descendant of the ancient line of kings, heir to the throne of Gondor. Now it's like, look, the ring must be destroyed. So the dwarf Gimli's like, what are we waiting for? Blam! Nope. It's not going to be that easy. The ring was forged in Mount Doom. Only there can it be unmade. It must be taken deep into Mordor and cast back into the fires from whence it came. But that's a tall order. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Everyone's arguing about who should carry it, and Frodo Baggins realizes his adventure is just getting started. He volunteers. Aragorn's like, you have my sword, Legolas, and my bow, Gimli, and my axe. And Boromir's coming too, although he also fights with the sword, so he can't really say that again. And Samwise Gamgee's sticking around too, as well as Merry and Pippin, who are questionably useful. And now the Fellowship of the Ring has assembled. They set off for a lot more walking, but not just normal walking, super epic walking. Yes, when the music swells, you know this shot. Oh, so good. Gimli knows a shortcut through the dwarven mines of Moria, but when they get inside, they realize this is no mine. It is a tomb because all the dwarves have been killed. Pretty soon, Gandalf gets lost. I have no memory of this place. And there they realize someone's following them. It's Gollum, but more on him later. Then as they're reading about what happened here, Pippin knocks this thing into the well, which makes the loudest noise ever. And now the orcs know they're here so it's time for an epic fight scene. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just orcs, they have a cave troll. Pretty soon they're surrounded, but wait, what's this coming that scares all the orcs off? The dwarves delved too greedily and too deep. They awoke a demon of the ancient world, the Balrog. As they flee across this unreasonably narrow bridge, Gandalf stops to 1v1 this thing. You shall not pass. And indeed, boom, the bridge crumbles under the Balrog and he falls down, but with his fire whip, oh, gets Gandalf's foot. Fly, you fools, and Gandalf falls into the abyss. 
but the adventure goes on. Next stop is a woods where a bunch of elves live, led by the shiniest elf yet, Lady Galadriel. Long story short, she gives Frodo a jug of shiny water, then lends the Fellowship some canoes, so they get to take a break from walking for a while and just cruise. But when Frodo goes to stretch his legs, he runs into Boromir, and the ring's gotten to him! Oh, he tries to take it! Frodo manages to escape, but then he runs into Aragorn. It's like, Frodo, I swore to protect you. Can you protect me from yourself? And so they realize the Fellowship's not gonna work. Frodo has to go on his own. But meanwhile, Saruman's been busy building an army worthy of Mordor. And he's not just using normal little orcs, he's crossbred these big-ass buff orcs. Whom do you serve? Saruman! They catch up with our Fellowship, and it's time for another epic orc fight. Merry and Pippin are in some trouble, but Boromir comes to the rescue to redeem himself from betraying Frodo. Boss orc with bow and arrow hits Boromir, but he's such a badass, he gets up and keeps on fighting! Yeah! After two more arrows, though, he's finally done. So Merry and Pippin are captured, and Sean Bean does what Sean Bean does best, gets an epic death scene. Meanwhile, Frodo's going to Mordor alone, but Sam's not letting that happen. Of course you are, and I'm coming with you! These two hug it out, it's an epic bromance. Next up is the two towers, named for Sauron's Tower of Isengard, and Sauron's Tower itself down in Mordor. Frodo and Sam continue walking, but pretty soon they realize they don't know where they're going. Luckily, someone who does know the way is sneaking in. It's Gollum! He's fully obsessed with the ring. He calls it his precious, and he's here to get it back from the hobbitses who stole it. But the hobbitses get the jump on him, and he promises to be nice, so it's like, look, you're gonna lead us to Mordor. But at the Black Gate, they realize Boromir was right. One does not simply walk into Mordor, but Gollum knows a secret entrance. Now, Gollum wasn't always this disgusting. He used to be a kind of normal guy named Smeagol, and he's got sort of a split personality thing going, the nice Smeagol and evil Gollum. And for a while, Smeagol wins out. He's having a good time with the hobbits, learning about potatoes. As for Aragorn and friends, the fellowship may be broken, but they can still save Mary and Pippin, so they're not walking, they're running. When the orcs stop for dinner, they're sad because they have no meat, but they kill one of their own. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! In the chaos, the hobbits try to escape, but what's this now? A bunch of horsemen riding in. They are the Riders of Rohan, and bad news, they're banished because the king is currently possessed by Saruman. But good news, they killed all the orcs, but more bad news, they probably killed the hobbits too. But Aragorn, Master Tracker, realizes the hobbits survived and made their way to Fangorn Forest. But inside, they're ambushed by the White Wizard. Oh no, it's Saruman! But wait, that's not Saruman! It's it's Gandalf! Turns out he and the Balrog had an epic fight until finally Gandalf won and smote his ruin upon the mountainside. Gandalf did die though, but long story short, he's not fully human and was immediately reincarnated, not as Gandalf the Grey, but as Gandalf the White. As for Merry and Pippin, they make friends with Treebeard, the Ent, and they call the Ent Moot to decide if the Ents will join the war, but it takes them the whole movie because Ents talk really slow. So our gang rides to Rohan, where the super old king is clearly possessed. Gandalf tries to break the spell, but it's like, you have no power here, Gandalf the Grey. But it's like, yo bro, I'm Gandalf the White now, and he kicks Saruman out of there. So now the king is deep possessed, he's ready to join the fight. They make for the fortress of Helm's Deep. But Gandalf rides off on important wizard business, I'll be back on dawn of the fifth day. King Theoden has a niece, Eowyn, a shield maiden of Rohan, who has a meat cute with Aragorn. She tries to win his heart by cooking him stew, but she's much better at fighting than cooking. And anyway, Aragorn's taken by his elf girlfriend Arwen. They had a romantic moonlight bridge scene, and the whole thing is that she's an elf, so she's immortal, but she's willing to give that up to be with him. I choose a mortal life. She's not really in this story, she's just chilling at Rivendell, but the long distance isn't a problem when you can meet up for sexy elf dreams. But now they're attacked by war griders and it's another epic action scene. But at the end, Aragorn gets caught and takes a tumble off the cliff. Turns out he's fine though, he landed in the soft water and is rescued by his loyal horse. So he makes it to Helm Deep with the best, sexiest door opening ever filmed. Meanwhile, Frodo and Sam are picked up by some men and turns out this is Faramir, brother of Boromir. He also plans to take the ring to Gondor, but on the way they're ambushed by Nazgul, who have upgraded from horses into dragon things. And in the end, Faramir's a real stand-up guy, he's able to resist the ring's influence and lets them go. But now Saruman's been busy building an even bigger army, and so it begins the Battle of Helm Helm's Deep! Gimli and Legolas have a fun competition to see who can kill the most orcs, but it's not even close. Legolas can use his elf powers to slide down the staircase on a shield, shoot orcs as he goes! He is a beast! But now Saruman has just invented gunpowder, so he sends in the torch runner, and boom! Blows up the wall! So it's the last stand epic charge for death and glory, but wait, what time is it? It's dawn of the fifth day, and Gandalf's back! He brought reinforcements, the riders of Rohan, and so it's an epic cavalry charge, and the battle is won! And as for the kill count competition, Gimli claims to have conveniently one more than Legolas, which I don't buy for a second. As for the Ents, they decide to join the fight when they see Saruman's been chopping down all their trees, so the Ents attack Isengard, flood the dam, and win the day. So that's one tower down, but Sauron himself is an even bigger threat. 
And now, in Return of the King, Sauron has entered the chat, unleashes the full might of his armies to the human capital of Gondor and the white city of Minas Tirith. Gandalf gets another chilly reception from Denethor, Boromir's father and steward of Gondor. Remember, the line of kings died out years ago. It's like, yo man, you gotta fight against Sauron, but Denethor is like, ha, I did my research, Sauron's a hoax. He's an awful father too. When Faramir comes back, it's like, I wish you died instead of Boromir. So to make his daddy proud, Faramir goes on a suicide charge to take back the city that's overrun with orcs. So as Denethor eats lunch, and Pippin sings a hauntingly beautiful song. He crunches a tomato, super weird, to represent he sent all those men to their deaths. So Gandalf goes behind his back, has Pippin light the signal fire, and it's the epic lighting of the beacon sequence. So back at Rohan, Aragorn gets to do what he does best and bust into the room dramatically. Gondor calls for aid, and Rohan will answer. Muster the Rohirrim! But they only muster 6,000 spears, less than half of what I'd hoped for. But now who's here to help? It's Lord Elrond. Oh, thanks, man. Did you bring an elf army? Oh, no, sorry, but I do have a lead on where you can find an army, because in this mountain lives a ghost army that swore their allegiance to the king of Gondor. And to help prove that you're the true king, I've brought you an epic magic sword. Yes, the sword that was broken that cut off the ring. It's just been sitting in Rivendell this whole time. The least we could do was repair it for you. So Aragorn and friends go to talk to some ghosts. It's like, we do not suffer the living to pass. You will suffer me. I am a Sildor's heir. Fight for me and I'll hold your oath fulfilled. As a prank, I guess, the ghosts drop an avalanche of skulls on him, but then it's like, yeah, bro, we're in. Now back to Frodo and Sam, who have mostly just been doing a lot of walking, but they finally find Gollum's secret stairs. So now they trade out walking for climbing. Now Frodo is pretty resistant to the ring, but after all this time, it's starting to wear him down. So when Sam's like, hey man, you want me to carry it for a while? Frodo doesn't like that. You're trying to bore me or me, bro. You gotta go home. So Gollum leads Frodo to the dark, scary tunnel, but once inside, he ditches him. Yeah, Gollum betrayed him after all. Frodo remembers he's got a bottle of shiny elf water, so now he can see what's in here. And it is Shelob the giant spider. In the end, she gets him with her stinger. Uh-oh, things look bleak. But here to rescue him is Sam, who followed him here. Let him go, you filth. Now Sam is way outclassed in this fight, but he gets a lucky shot and scares Shelob off. But now it looks like Frodo's dead. Don't go where I can't follow. But turns out that poison just paralyzes him. Frodo's still alive. And now, the full armies of Mordor have made it to Minas Tirith. Denethor gives an uninspiring speech. Flee! Flee for your lives! So Gandalf finally smacks this guy and takes charge of the defenses. It's another big siege battle that lasts like two hours. Eventually they bring up a massive battering ram. So cool it has its own name, Grand. And yeah, long story short, uh, the city's in trouble. Earlier, by the way, Faramir miraculously made it back and now Denethor is ready to do a double funeral pyre even though Faramir is actually still alive. Pippin's gotta jump in there to save him and a flaming Denethor yeets himself off the balcony. So things look bleak, but wait, what's this? The Riders of Rohan have arrived just in time again. Theoden King gives an epic battle speech. Ride now for ruin and the world's ending. And as the Rohan music swells, everyone's on their feet cheering. Yes, so epic. But Sauron's got his own surprise cavalry enforcements in the form of Oliphants, which are basically giant elephants. And to make things worse, Sun Nazgul gets King Theoden. Eowyn jumps in to save him and he yeah, takes that thing's head off. But this is not just any Nazgul. It's the leader of the Nazgul, the Witch King. Fool, no man can kill me. But Mary the Hobbit can stab him in the ankles and Eowyn's like, boom, I am no man. Oh, stabbed in the face. Now Aragorn and friends finally arrive with the ghost army and it's basically just cleanup at this point. Legolas pulls his best stunt yet and single-handedly takes out this Oliphant, slides down its trunk. That still only counts as one. And this invincible ghost army is super helpful, but their contract was just for one battle. But it's not over yet. This was but a taste of Sauron's forces. It all comes down to Frodo in the ring. Sam did rescue Frodo, so the mission's still on and now they're closer to Mount Doom than ever, but an army of orcs is in the way. So Aragorn hatches a crazy plan to march on the Black Gate itself, draw out Sauron's armies, and buy clear passage for Frodo and Sam. Aragorn gives his own epic battle speech, the day may come when the strength of men fails, but it is not this day. Never thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. What about side by side with a friend? Aye, I could do that. So while everyone out there is having an epic battle, the real fate of Middle-earth is in the hands of two walking hobbits. And this is their hardest walking yet. The ring gets heavier the closer they get, and finally Frodo's pooped. But Sam's not done yet. Maybe I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! Oh, Samwise Gamgee, MVP! So they finally made it to Mount Doom. All Frodo has to do is let go. But the ring is not gonna let that happen. It finally overwhelms Frodo. The ring is mine. And oh, Frodo puts it on! But still slinking about is Gollum, and now he's ready to take back his precious, jumps on there and bites Frodo's finger off. Yes, Gollum finally has his precious back. But Frodo Frodo's ready to fight for it, so these two grappling, and oh, off the cliff! 
So in the end, it is Gollum who accidentally saves Middle-earth as he Terminator 2's down into the lava. Frodo managed to hang on, and Sam's right there, don't you let go! And as the ring is destroyed, Sauron realizes maybe he shouldn't have tied his life force to a piece of jewelry. Because his whole tower crumples, and blam! Sauron all the way defeated! And everything in Mordor was connected to Wi-Fi of the Rings, so it all comes crashing down! Now Gandalf rides in to pick up the hobbits with Eagle Uber, and before you ask no, they couldn't have just flown the ring to Mordor in the first place. And so the day is saved. Aragorn's officially crowned king, and Mary's his hot elven girlfriend. He goes to see the hobbits. My friends, you bow to no one. And the whole kingdom kneels to our unlikely heroes. And thus begins a half hour of fake out endings, cause it looks like it could be this, but actually we get to go home to the Shire first. But we're not done yet. Sam gets married and Frodo writes a book. Finally, the last of the elves are leaving Middle-earth for their heaven type place across the Sea, and Bilbo Baggins is coming with him. But wait a second, Frodo's going with him too. Yeah, he was too scarred by this adventure. He can't go back to a normal life. And so Frodo Baggins sets sail for America. And that's where the Lord of the... Oh wait, actually we get to see Sam had some kids first. And that's where the Lord of the Rings trilogy comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.